Hey folks, Captain Mikey here, Sawgrass Fishing Charters in beautiful, sunny Florida. Well guys, welcome to another episode of my weekly tips, tricks, and techniques video. A series of videos full of how-tos, product demonstrations, tips, tricks, and techniques that are geared towards making you a more knowledgeable and better angler altogether. Well guys, in this week's episode, I'm going to go over one of the deadliest lures in any bass fisherman's arsenal. It is one of the most diverse and widely used lures anywhere across this nation and it's well known that it is one of the best producers of big, big largemouth bass. Yes guys, that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about how to fish a jig. Stay tuned for this. You're going to love this. Fishing a jig can be one of the most deadly methods there are when you're targeting big largemouth bass. The world of jig fishing can get quite confusing out there. Whether you're a seasoned pro at jig fishing or just an amateur just learning how to fish jigs for the first time, it can get very confusing because there are literally thousands of options in the world of jigs. From the different styles of jigs, the different techniques on fishing jigs, to the different trailers that you can couple them up with, it can get quite confusing. So I'm going to simplify things for you guys today. I'm going to break down the world of jig fishing into three styles of jigs. I'm going to go over how to fish each style, what each style is geared towards, and a, and a couple different color options. Now before I get into all the varieties of jigs, let's go over the gear that I like to fish with when I'm fishing jigs out there. For me, there is no option other than a casting rod casting equipment. You're more than likely going to be in some pretty heavy cover. That's where jigs work the best. Whether it's heavy rocks, heavy structure, heavy weeds, that's what jigs were mainly designed for. So you're going to want to have some pretty heavy gear out there. I almost always use my medium heavy rods out there. I personally like a 7 foot 2 uh, or 7 foot 3 medium heavy with an extra fast action tip. On. That 7 foot 2 in length and the extra fast tip and be only being medium heavy gives me a little more accuracy on my cast. The extra swing that that rod has will give me a little more accuracy on my casts out there, but it's plenty strong enough to be able to pull in those big bass that jigs are well known to catch and pull me through any of that heavy cover that I'm going to probably be fishing with these jigs. Couple that up with a really nice casting reel. Now you don't need to go too crazy on your reel rate gear ratios on these reels. More than likely, jigs are fished fairly slow. You don't need that incredibly fast retrieve on there. So I like to use my Arden Apex Pro Elite Series. That's a 6.5 to one gear ratio. Right? It's plenty fast for anything you need to do, but it's easy enough to slow it down when you want to just hop that jig along there. And as always, every, one of the, every time I'm jig fishing, I'm using Strictly Braid. Absolutely using Strictly Braid out there. You need that durability, you need that strength that a braid has. A lot of guys will go really heavy depending on what kind of cover and structure you're using at about a 60, 65 pound braid. I tend to carry just around a 40 pound braid. So again, the best gear that I recommend when you're fishing with jigs is go medium heavy, seven foot two, seven foot three with an extra fast action tip. Couple that up with a really good casting reel and make sure that that's spooled up with about at least a 40 pound braid. Ah, the world of jigs. It can get quite confusing, guys, when you're talking about styles of jigs, colors of jigs, what trailers to throw, where to fish it, how to fish it. Don't let it get confusing, guys. I'm going to break it all down to you guys one jig at a time and teach you everything you need to know about how to fish a jig. Now, as I said, it can get pretty confusing when you're fishing jigs out there because there are so many different varieties and options out there. But I'm going to break it down to three distinct styles of jigs for you guys that will cover a whole variety of options for you guys. The first variety of jigs that we're going to talk about is your standard, what we call flipping jigs. Standard flipping jigs, they come in all sorts of different sizes and weights and everything, but really what they are is they're your standard style of jig. 
And that's the kind of jig that you're gonna be flipping and pitching up under cover, into, into grass, into lily pads, anything like that. It covers a whole good variety of areas out there. Generally, a flipping jig is gonna have a pretty standard style head. You'll have a flatter area on the bottom, which I like. I like to find jigs like that that have a flatter area on the bottom. That helps it when I'm skipping it up under docks and things like that, that flat area out there. But the shape and the design of it is meant to help it punch through uh, any kind of cover, but also when it hits the ground, it's gonna kind of stand up just a little bit. But it's mostly designed to imitate crayfish. So they're meant to get into the cover, underneath the cover, and be slowly hopped along the bottom out there. When I'm lo looking for a good jig, one of the first things I look at, does it have a big strong hook on it? And does it have a nice stiff weed guard on there? That's gonna help it so it doesn't get hung up and all that. Now that's your jig, but when you have a flipping jig like this, you're gonna wanna couple it up with a trailer. When you're talking flipping jigs, one of my favorite ways and the best ways is to couple it up with a crawfish style trailer. Anything that has a bit of a flap to it. Now these come in a variety of sizes, of course, and styles out there, that's entirely up to you. Experiment with different sizes, different styles, and see what works best for you. It's all gonna be about confidence at that point. No matter what cover you're fishing with a flipping jig, is you're gonna wanna work this slowly across the bottom. Small little hops, just like a crayfish would do when it's wor working itself along the bottom. It's gonna pick that tail and flutter up and back, flutter up and back. And that's what you're gonna do, that's what you're trying to imitate with that. Now when it comes to colors with flipping jigs, that a lot of that depends on the clarity of your water. If you're fishing very clear water, you're definitely going to want to go with things that are a little bit more uh, in the lighter colors, your green pumpkins, your light browns, your light greens. My standard go-to is a blue and black. I love the blue and black flipping jigs out there. Couple them up with a trailer that's going to maximize that color but look really good out there. That for me, that covers a whole variety of water. I almost always go with my blue and black flipping jigs. Now keep in mind when you're selecting trailers for your flipping jigs out there, the different size of the trailer is going to affect the fall or the sink of your jig. When you've got a much bigger trailer on there, you got something in a larger size, it's got a lot more resistance in the water and it's going to slow that sink down. Like go with the little smaller crawfish trailer something like this. This is going to have a little quicker sink to it. It's not the weight of the trailer, it's the weight of the lure, but the resistance of the trailer in the water that affects the sink of your, your jig. Now, the second style of jig that I want to talk to you guys about today is your standard football jig. A football jig gets its name very simply. The head of the jig is shaped very much like a football. Now, these are a little different. These are a casting jig. Generally, you can pitch these out or cast these out quite a distance and you're gonna walk these or drag these along the bottom. These are not as effective when you're in heavy grass or heavy cover like that. These are much more effective when you're working hard bottoms or rocky bottoms. If your body of water has a real grassy or weedy bottom or even a real silty or mucky bottom, a football jig's probably not gonna be the way you want, gonna wanna go. These are meant to drag across the bottom, slowly walk small little hops. That's the design of the head that's shaped like a football that's meant to stand the lure up and drag across the bottom. And that's the reason why any football jigs that I buy, I don't bother buying them in any colors other than your standard crawfish colors. Your green pumpkins, your watermelons, oranges and browns, but anything that's really going to imitate a crawfish. That's all a football jig is really trying to do. It's going to walk across the bottom. If you want a couple of trailer up on your football jig, of course a crawfish style is going to be the best. The design of that jig, where the eye is actually placed on it, again it's going to sit on the bottom the, with the hook pointed up, the skirt's going to flare out, and the claws of your trailer are going to be sitting up in the air, just like a crayfish sitting on the bottom would be. And as he scoots along backwards, it's going to keep that trailer up there, skipping along the, the bottom. Again, a football head jig works best in hard bottoms, rocky bottoms, slowly dragged across the bottom. And the third style of jig that we're gonna talk about is a swim jig. The swim jig is actually pretty unique in the world of jigs. It's completely different than most of the other jigs. Your standard swim jig is gonna have a much more aerodynamic head to it. And that's because you're swimming these through the water. As opposed to the other jigs where you're hopping or dragging across the bottom, these are gonna be swum right through the water. You want that narrow, aerodynamic head of a swim jig to be able to swim through any of that cover out there. 
Now, swim jigs come in a variety of styles. There's all sorts of manufacturers, but every every swim jig is going to have a very aerodynamic style of head. A swim jig, as opposed to a flipping jig or a football jig, its main imitation is going to be a shad or a fish. A swim jig is a deadly, deadly style of jig. You're going to fish it totally different. You're going to cast it out, pitch it up, pitch it underneath, anything like that, and you're going to come back at a fairly decent speed swimming that through the water. If I know the bass are targeting shad, I'm going to go with something a little more shad colored, a little more shad imitator out there. Uh, if I know they're hitting on bluegill and other fish like that, again, my black and blues or any of my green pumpkins with blue or purple fleck, uh, anything along this line. It's a bit more of a swim jig. It's got a green, uh, green pumpkin with a purple and blue blue fleck in there. That's going to be imitate uh, bait fish a lot better. Now, when you're talking about trailers on swim jigs, you're gonna, again, this lure is being swum through the water. You're swimming it at a fairly decent pace, so you're going to want trailers that have a fair amount of action to them. Whether it is a cross-style trailer that has good flappers on it, so that those have a lot of motion and commotion as it's being swimming through the water. Uh, but one of the deadliest ways to couple up with your swim jigs is to use something like a swim bait. A swim bait with a paddle tail on it is a, uh, attached to a swim swimming jig is a deadly, deadly method for big bass out there. Try to couple your trailer, match your trailers up nice and neat with the colors out there, give it a much better, more realistic presentation. If you're using black and blues, of course you want something along those lines. But the trailer on a swim bait should always have lots of action to it. That's the best way to fish a swim jig. So that's it. Your three basic styles of jigs that'll help you cover a wide variety of water and hopefully be a very effective method of fishing for big bass for you. When you are pitching and flipping with flipping jigs, you're aiming at specific targets inside a cover, inside a structure. Whether it's under a dock or in between a hole in the lily pads or a hole in, in any kind of weed or grass that you are in there, you're gonna try to pitch it or flip it right up into that hole. You're gonna let it sink and once it gets to the bottom, you're really going to try to work it in that structure, barely moving it at all. Once you got it in the space, it's just a simple couple little switches and pumps, and you're getting it to kind of hop in that area. Try not to reel up too much, try not to use the reel too much, just kind of hop it two or three times, you know, giving those little pops, getting it to hop off the bottom, up and down, basically. Again, you're not usually going to be too far away from it. Uh, if this isn't a long distance casting method, so you're flipping and pitching in fairly close proximity to where you're standing, in tight cover, in tight areas, and you're able to just bounce that up off the bottom. You don't want to have to lift it 10, 12 inches off the bottom if you even have that much water. It's really just hopping it one to two inches off the bottom, letting those claws and everything else do its action up and down, keeping it in the face of that bass. That bass more than likely watch that lure fall down. When it hits the bottom, it flares up a little bit, the bass is still watching it, you give it that two, one or two little pops, those claws start action, giving that action, that bass is going to hammer it. And that's how you fish a flipping or a flipping jig. Now, when we're talking about a football head jig, that's much more of a cast. Usually when you're fishing football headed jigs, you're going to be fishing open water. You're going to find rock piles, you're going to find ledges, you're going to find hard bottom is what you're looking at. So it's much more simple than anything else. That's your standard cast. And once you got your fo football jig passed out there, you let it sink to the bottom. Once you see the, your line has, has gone slack, you know it's on the bottom. Reel up that slack so you got a semi-taut line, and you're just gonna, with the rod, drag it along the bottom. Reel up your slack, drag it along the bottom. And that's best, the best method for a football jig. That jig's gonna slide across the bottom when you stop, it flares back up, the claws go back up, and then you give that little drag across the bottom, it closes, drags across like a crawfish would, it stops, the jig flares back up, the, craw the claws go back up, and that's generally what it is. Again, you're, this is a lot of dragging, so you're feeling the bottom the whole time, so tell what kind of structure's down there, but you're, you're gonna feel that bite. Drag it across the bottom, keep in contact with the bottom almost the whole time, reel up that slack, let it open up. Drag across the bottom, reel the slack, let it open up. That's it. That's fishing a football head jig. With a swim jig, basically you're going to fire it out into any kind of cover or any kind of distance that you feel is most accurate. 
Just give it a good cast, get it out to where you want, let it sink down a little bit. If it's in the grass, if it's anywhere, that's fine. If you get it into that cover and you just start pulling back and reeling a little bit, you're more than likely gonna hook up with a bunch of that grass and waste that cast all together. If you give it a little bit, you feel that pressure of the grass, give it a, a quick pop. Real, real quick, violent jerk on the rod and rip it out of that grass. More than likely, it's not gonna grab up to anything because of the, the weed guard that's on there. You're gonna rip it through that grass and what that's gonna do is a lot of times will trigger a very big reaction strike from those from those bass. If you feel like you're getting you're about to get hung up in any kind of grass, any kind of weeds, as I said, give it some violent rips right through that grass. And then once you're in the clear, you're just gonna swim it along, guys. At a medium pace, kind of bring it back. Just a nice steady retrieve there, letting the trailer, letting the, the skirt, all that stuff get, do all its own action as it's, being, as it's swimming through the water. But vary your retrieves, guys. I mean, that's the best I can tell you. Vary the retrieve, give it a nice steady retrieve, stop for a second, let it sink a little bit, give it a little twitch, and then go back to a steady retrieve. That's gonna give it a little bit more natural action rather than just steady, uh, headed in a perfectly straight line the whole time. It's gonna be a lot more like a fish swimming around, checking out its surroundings, or possibly fleeing to get away from a hungry predator. And that's it, it's just that simple. Three different methods of fishing jigs that hopefully is gonna help you out next time you're on your own body of water. And hopefully it's gonna lead to better bites and bigger bags for you guys. Guys, I really hope you did enjoy this. If you did, do me a favor and smash that like button down there. And leave a comment for me. Leave a comment on anything else you'd like to see me film for you. I'll do my very best to make a video out of each and every one of those comments, guys. I promise you that. But most importantly, subscribe to the channel, guys. If you're already subscribed, well, stay subscribed because there's plenty more coming in Sawgrass Bass's future. And I really hope to see you all next week for next week's episodes of Tips, Tricks, and Techniques. Until then, guys, as I always say one last time, Captain Mikey signing out. The future is bright, you keep those lines tight.